Hey there, welcome to another installation guide. This is part 11, remapping joypads to add extra functions in Windows Amiga emulator. And so this game, Galaxy Force, suffers from one major problem, and that is you have to push the controller forward in order to use the thrust. You can see the joystick works perfectly fine on the main menu. We can pull up and down, left and right to change all the options. But when we start the actual mission itself, the game is made more difficult because we have to push up to use the firepower and we have to push the fire button to instigate the thrust. On a game like this, it would have been terrific if we could have remapped the controller so that it was up to thrust and fire to fire. And luckily with WinUA we can do that because there is an option and we have to go down to the game port setting to have a look at that. And in game port you can see retro joystick adapter, that's my USB zip stick which is in there at the moment and that is selected on port 2. You can see that we can select any of our controllers in port 2 including a PS2 controller and also a virtual controller and the keyboard as well. But you can see if we go all the way back to the normal zip stick USB device and select remap then unfortunately we can see our joystick controller options but we cannot configure them because all the configuration options at the bottom are ghosted. So what we have to do is to click exit on that screen and that will take us back to this one and what we have to do is change to the custom port mode of which I think there are four or five custom modes and clicking on remap on custom will show us a blank configuration and from here we can add whatever custom configuration we like. So first of all let's configure the joystick options and clicking on the space underneath the direction and clicking on the remap option should give us the excuse to change that to a different mapping configuration so if you click that and pull the joystick to the left and on the very top of the screen it usually says waiting for input press f11 to quit and that's cut off the top of my emulator you can see we're waiting for the right input and up and down as well and we can press fire and you can see that that has changed that configuration and you can also change the final one as well and delete the second mouse button in this case that is the joystick configuration but you might notice that that is not working at the moment because it's going through left and right as one single maneuver so what we have to do is double click on that again and reselect another input and this time you'll notice that it puts plus and minus next to the x axis and that says that we are moving the x axis plus and minus and not all in one go. So let's delete the standard ones and let's put in the pluses and the minuses. And this is the standard configuration for a joystick now and this should work perfectly fine as it is as a joystick. But for this game we really want to swap over the forward and the fire button. So you can see the forward up is selected up, so let's change that to the fire button and delete the forward. And when it comes to the fire button, let's change that to the forward and let's delete the button, which was the standard for that. Now that we've swapped those over, the button is now forward and forward is now the button. So now we've swapped those around, let's see if that works, if we click on exit, that will actually show us that the configuration has now changed in the custom bar. You can see a big long exclamation there and we are automatically set to the joystick for this. You don't have to change to the CD32 controller or any special configuration. If you click on OK now, hopefully forward should now be thrust and fire should be fire. 
and that means that this particular game should be a bit easier to play from now on. Take a look at another example. What if we wanted to change the controls in FA18 Interceptor? Moving to the game ports tab, you can see we start off from a blank sheet of paper again, but observing the bar at the bottom, this is the important one where we can add events. You can see that the normal mouse controls are listed as well as the CD32 and the CDTV and normal joystick controller one as well as the 3d32 extra buttons can be configured you just click on those and click on add event and then you can change those to whatever map you want to you can see joystick player 2 is there and the cd controller extra buttons as well if you have a light pen then the light pen can be configured as well as a dual light pen if you have two of them and if you use a parallel port joystick this is the place to add parallel port joystick input options i'm not sure at all what qualifier does but you can see underneath that we can list all of the function keys and all of the keys on the keyboard are listed and we should definitely need those for interceptor you can see all of the keypad buttons are on there as well and the number buttons and after that you can see even more cd tv remote control buttons that we can configure to our controller and key code i've no idea what they do maybe that's a hacking code and you can see pc functions as well for the extra buttons on a pc keyboard including f11 and you can even take a screen grab as well using those buttons and some more key codes and looking at the win uae options we can bring up the gui by showing the gui we don't have to press f12 we can simply assign that to a button on our controller and we can also change over the discs as well from a button on our controller and eject discs and we can change various functions of win uae by pressing the button on our controller you can see we can load and save checkpoints load and save save states as well and we can select to quit the emulator as well the quick way with the joystick button or a controller and we can toggle different window sizes as well from a single button on our controller and increase emulation speed as well insert discs remove more discs a disc swapping feature and you can see rcg displays we can swap up to four displays with a button on our controller and select up to three different input configurations as well we can change arcadia inputs or american laser disc games if you're playing mad dog mccree and also the cubo cd32 which used the touch screen we can emulate the touch screen on our controller and extra cd32 buttons and also a video grab if you've got a video grabber but there are one or two interesting functions on here including switch between audio modes switch the joystick ports over as well and there's also a function to increase and decrease emulation speed at the touch of your controller so just to give this a little bit of an experiment let's select something to add to this configuration and for this i'm going to select the reset emulation function because it's sometimes handy to reset the emulator with a press of a button and so selecting that from the list nothing will happen until we click on add event and then once we've clicked on add event it will patiently wait for us to select something which will trigger that action and in this case we can press a key on the keyboard it's the p key and now whenever we press the p key whilst we're playing a game it will reset the entire emulator and so that's how we add that particular event 
let's not stop here let's check out another one let's scroll through that list and let's see what we can choose and let's add another one this time it's full screen window mode and for that i've chosen the space bar so if i press the space bar it will toggle between full screen and full window in win uae but that's not really very good because what we need to do is to configure the controls for f18 interceptor so it's like ace combat well when we change those controls we'll have to use the keyboard in this case to select the various controls and offer you can see i've mapped the keys on the keyboard to a 16 button ps2 controller and you can see we've remapped the directions to the analog stick we've remapped the thrust f keys to the shoulder buttons and also the right analog stick and we've also remapped some of the keys to what it calls the hat switch which is basically the d-pad and you'll see the plus and the minus next to those which denotes the various keys the d-pad and now we are happy with that you can see a big long custom configuration at the top and hopefully this will mean that i can use my ps2 controller now to play this game an F18 Inceptor with the PS2 controller we can move left and right with the analog stick and we can also shuttle left and right as well with the shoulder buttons and that moves the rudder and we can also change other various functions as well if I pull to the left on the right analog stick it will change the thrust to 60 if I pull to the right it will go to 80 forward is 100% thrust and back is only 10% thrust and we can also change the thrust in increments using the lower of the shoulder buttons you can see the thrust goes up in stages So configured the extra buttons you can see the radar range is changing because of the circle button we can also change the target as well with a triangle button and we can also select which weapon we want to use with the square and fire that with the x and we can also put on the brake with the d-pad as well as the landing gear and the arrestor hook and fire some flares as well which i really should have swapped for the chaff in this case Thank you for viewing this guide to how to allocate the different buttons and to reassign them both on a controller and on a keyboard and I hope this has opened your eyes to how to reconfigure things if you can imagine an RPG without a keyboard but simply using buttons on a controller and flight simulators as well then you can imagine that this has no end of possibilities on your emulated Amiga. Thank you very much.